good sunny afternoon to you all. This is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I don't know if you all can see it from where you are, but right before I started filming, a male and female house finch flew into my borage. The male has a beautiful raspberry flush to his plumage this time of year. And they really like the borage seeds. They also like thistle seeds. So I'm gonna stay back here and not bother them so they can eat their lunch. I wanted to make a brief video about diversity and abundance in the permaculture garden. You can also see there's an Anna's hummingbird and there's another male house sparrow and a song sparrow singing. I am from, um, not from Oregon originally. I have been here 15 years, but I went to college in Iowa and I do miss the diversity and abundance of songbirds, migratory songbirds in the Midwest. The West Coast just doesn't quite have the same. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and see if you can see them feeding. It's not quite the same here, so I try and appreciate the species that we do have. I do miss cardinals a lot. So when we talk about diversity and valuing diversity in permaculture, there are ecosystems in nature that are not very diverse. And what happens because of that is they tend to not be very resilient to disturbance or disease or introduced species. So in permaculture design, we try and value using a multiplicity of species. And not only a multiplicity of species, but trying to plant an array of varieties from within that species because there is disease resistance and there is flavor and color difference and hardiness difference within one species amongst different varieties. You might only have room in your garden for one apple tree and that's okay. But if you have the ability to grow multiple apple trees, try and grow different varieties, both so you have diversity in your diet, a harvest amongst along a greater um, span of the year. I have some of my apples ready in September and some aren't ready until the end of October and they store a lot better than others. So I have fresh apples all the way into December because some of them store very well. So for example, if I'm going to grow roses, I'm not going to grow, I have more than a dozen kinds of roses. I'm not going to grow 12 Jude the Obscures. I'm going to grow diversity because it's a feast for my eyes, because they bloom different times of the year. This rose over my palette shed is really coming into its own. But I'm not also just going to grow specifically roses. What if a disease comes through and wipes out all my roses? I'm left with no flowering plants and no uh, food for my pollinators. So I want to grow a whole array of things. And then also not everything likes to feed on roses. So I'm gonna grow plants that have upward facing umbel shaped flowers like this valerian that hoverflies and butterflies and wasps like to feed on. And then I'm gonna grow plants like tomatoes that bumblebees like to feed on, but hummingbirds and butterflies and honeybees do not like to feed on. So when we talk about diversity, it provides a greater array in your diet and in terms of your, your visual diet. And it draws in a diversity of birds and mammals and insects and amphibians to your garden when you have a diversity of plants. But it also sets you up for resilience. So in valuing diversity, if I grow, well, let's give an example. If you look back in my garden, back in the orchard here, again, if you haven't seen my videos before, I have a U-shaped orchard. 
it's called a sun trap around the perimeter of the property. And I have, I want to say I have 42 fruit trees and a lot more shrubs and berry bushes. Hello, crow. So look in this back corner, I have a desert king fig, which I prune, otherwise it would be that tall. I prune it. Right in front of it, I used to grow an apricot, a Puget gold apricot, which apricots are my favorite tree fruit. And I was very proud of this apricot and it produced like gangbusters the first two years and then it got shot leaf disease. And it didn't respond well despite being treated twice a year with copper fungicide, which is an organic fungicide, and me pruning it for optimal um, air circulation, it still got worse and worse to the point where I had to remove it. If I had planned my whole orchard with 42 trees of Puget Gold Apricot, I would be devastated and I would be out of business. But because I diversify what I grow, I'm sad to no longer have apricots, but I took it out because it was not producing, I wasn't getting enough of a yield off of it for the labor I had to put in it. It required a lot of work and even so it was struggling. So instead, all of these other things that are thriving in my garden, I let them persist. And while I lost the apricot, I put in jujubes and I put in a different kind of mulberry down there. I have three mulberries in my garden. I put in a second kind of fig, a negron fig, and I put in rugosa roses down there, which give me a yield of big fat rose hips for jelly in the fall and syrup. So I lost one thing, but because I have so many other kinds of plants in the garden, particularly fruit plants, it didn't devastate me. And when we talk about resilience, we talk about your, your bounce back factor, right? How quickly do you bounce back from hardship? And when I have that diversity of revenue streams for my business, I have that diversity of plants that I grow for sources of food for me and my chickens. I'm able to bounce back more quickly because if something falls through, something dies, I have a lot of other elements to utilize, right? If I lose one revenue stream, I've not built my entire business around on-site permaculture design courses, which are now kaput, right? I've not built my entire business around one product selling apricots. I've not designed my diet around strictly apricots. So I just encourage you to think about that when you're planning your garden, thinking about diversifying varieties and diversifying species. Look up what does well in your area and it might be something you've never grown before. But if it's acclimated to your climate, give it a try. You never know, you might like it. I didn't know that I liked jujubes until I planted them. Actually, I really like them. I didn't know that I would like gummy berries until I planted them. And I do like them. And my kids really like them. And my chickens, they will do anything to get at them. So if you have thoughts on diversifying in permaculture and valuing diversity amongst plants and animals, amongst insects, pollinators, sources of income, and how that lends to resilience, please feel free and leave a comment or if you have a video that you enjoy somewhere else on YouTube on the same subject, please, please share it in the comments. I would love to learn more about the diversity that other people value in their garden and the benefits that they get from it. So thanks for tuning in. I'm going to get back to gardening. I'll be back later with another video.